Government agencies are undertaking an unprecedented period of IT and application modernization. Efforts to collect uh, vast amounts of information uh, combined with the need to uh, operate securely in today's multi-cloud environment has placed tremendous pressures on uh, IT officials in government, uh, particularly in managing multi-pronged IT modernization initiatives. And that's where Broadcom comes in. With its leading semiconductor and infrastructure software solutions, Broadcom is helping its customers adapt to rapidly changing IT environments. I'm Wyatt Cash with Scoop News Group, and here to talk about building a broader IT modernization strategy is Hawk Tan, Chief Executive Officer for Broadcom. Uh, Hawk, thank you so much for joining us today. Glad to be here. So I'd like to start with, what's the biggest opportunity that you believe federal agencies uh, still seem to be missing, uh, in your view, in their efforts to modernize their IT systems? There are two big opportunities here. One for policymakers and the other for regulators. First, policymakers should give federal agencies as much flexibility as possible when using their modernization investments. While there is no one size fit all or blueprint, policymakers often direct modernization dollars to a specific goals or requirements. This results in agencies being forced to modernize where the money is, as opposed to where the modernization is needed the most. Second, Agency and commercial chief information officers must not lose sight of capabilities that give them the freedom to innovate as they consider their modernization roadmaps. Sometimes they get lured into certain capabilities under the guise of modernization and they find themselves lacking the flexibility to truly own their modernization roadmap. Here's an example. We are seeing the growth of multi-cloud within the federal government. And that's a good thing. With our planned acquisition of VMware, we see VMware and its multi-cloud strategy as critical to the success of this sort of flexibility because it provides CIOs with the tools, capabilities, and know-how to control their own destiny, giving them greater choice without having to refactor the applications that run workloads. To fully take advantage of multi-cloud, CISOs should be investing in the tools and cap capabilities that enable them to own their own modernization roadmap, regardless of whether the work is done on-prem or in the cloud. So next, I'd like to ask, your company has been a leader in acquisitions, and I'd be interested to hear, how do you feel acquisitions and consolidation in the commercial IT industry uh, translates into more innovative or more capable offerings for the federal IT community? Now, Broadcom has a long history of pursuing strategic acquisitions, and is no stranger to m and Generally speaking, M&A is about making both companies stronger by strengthening an acquired company's balance sheet and the new owner can better invest in core products and provide its customers longer-term assurances. An acquirer like Broadcom is in a stronger position to invest and better serve its clients including the federal government. In a time with so much focus on modernization, M&A enables newer companies to achieve the scale they need and the product stability federal agencies crave. As raising capital has become more expensive, M&A also provides an alternative path that can serve federal agency customers. And then how has Broadcom's investment strategy shifted over the uh, past couple of years? And 
Why should federal uh, IT leaders pay closer attention to what Broadcom uh, brings to the table now for federal agencies to deliver on their missions? Broadcom is committed to serving the federal market and has been a long-term supplier to the U.S. The government, including divisions, focus on our national security. Federal agencies are beginning to embrace multi-cloud architectures. So Broadcom has doubled down on our commitment following the close of our pending acquisition of VMware we will continue to invest in IT modernization objectives, particularly as federal agencies are beginning to embrace multi-cloud architectures. Multi-cloud is both mission and cost effective. With the right tools and capabilities, multi-cloud allow federal agencies to determine the best and most transparent fit for their IT environments. Following the transaction close, the combined Broadcom and VMware will be investing in solutions that enable federal government customers to have the flexibility to modernize applications, manage software and services, and secure data across clouds. These solutions will give federal agencies the tools they need to control their own destiny, and create the multi-cloud environment they want, all while increasing choice and reducing risk around lock-ins, control over data, critical operations, and rising costs. We expect this multi-cloud capability to enhance Broadcom solutions across our mission-critical software portfolio, which today already supports some of the most complex hybrid environments for vast number of federal agencies. As an engineering first company, Broadcom is committed to innovating leading edge technology, ensuring successful deployments of our solutions and delivering value for our customers to drive growth. Our business model is predicated on adding long-term value and improving our products over time. We realize the value of a multi-cloud strategy as part of the overall effort to modernize the federal IT infrastructure and a stronger VMware backed by Broadcom means that our customers in the federal space can deliver on this multi-cloud mission successfully while also enjoying world-class security that will enable them to accelerate innovation for all their applications. So you've indicated that you continue to plan to keep investing in VMware's Tanzu business. Can you explain what that is and why that's important to federal agencies, particularly in light of your comments about being in a multi-cloud environment today? Since we announced our intent to acquire VMware last year, I've continuously heard from customers about their excitement about VMware's momentum around cloud-native apps in its Tenzu business. Tenzu is a central part of VMware's software portfolio and its multi-cloud strategy that helps enterprises accelerate the speed and agility of innovation within their organization. It will remain that way after Broadcom's acquisition of VMware closed. VMware customers, including the US Department of Defense, are leveraging Tenzu to run mission-critical cloud-native applications. Just last month, the DOD announced a $9 billion investment in a multi-cloud infrastructure across all domains and classification levels. With its multi-cloud strategy very much in the initial stages of development, DOD is expected to build and deploy more modern applications every year. Modernizing legacy systems 
as part of the DOD's move to multi-cloud, is a national security imperative. Through its partnership with Tenzu, the DOD is poised to succeed by continuing to invest in software factories that build, secure, and deploy cloud-native applications for its national defense and war-fighting capabilities. Upon the close of our acquisition of VMware, we will remain committed to this partnership with the DOD, and we look forward to building similar mission-critical collaborations across the U.S. government. And then lastly, I'd like to get your perceptions on how do you see um, uh, the efforts by government and industry to work more closely together, uh, particularly on issues like national security. Today, Symantec, a part of Broadcom, has a strong partnership with U.S. government agencies, working together to identify attacks and tracking them down. We know that the information we've shared with the federal government has helped prevent and mitigate major ransomware attacks. Similarly, the information the federal government has helped protect our customers and the overall cyber threat landscape. Key to our relationship with US government agencies is our Threat Hunter team which follows a detailed and highly successful process of shining a light on attacks and groups behind them, whether they be espionage groups or high-level cybercrime operations capable of extorting millions of dollars from their victims. Our investigations allow us to build a broad picture of an attack including a profile of the attackers and the tools, targets, and motivations behind it. This allows us to develop actionable intelligence. We use these insights not just to improve our product's ability to protect against critical threats, but we often share this information with customers and relevant government agencies to keep them up to date and protect against potential adversaries. One example of this is our uncovering of Dexin, a highly sophisticated piece of malware used for espionage, which allowed attackers to borrow deep into a target's network and exfiltrate data without raising suspicions. As an alliance my member of the Joint Cyber Defense Collaboration, the JCDC, we work closely with the Cyber Security and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, to engage with multiple foreign governments targeted with DEXIN and actually, insist, and actually assist them in detection and remediation. We're confident that this kind of relationship will only deepen in the future. We can also do more to improve information sharing through U.S. government efforts to reduce restrictions on sharing information and work more collaboratively with the private sector. That's interest, both with key agencies and policymakers in Congress to better improve the legal and operational environments to allow for greater information sharing. On the operational side, that would include supporting such as CISA's Joint Cyber Security Defense Collaboration. Well, Hak Ten, thank you so much for joining us here at FedScoop and sharing your insights about building a more modern IT strategy in the federal government. So thank you for being with us. Why? Thank you. Glad to be here.